I am Julie Brevilia with Metro Water Services, and Andrea Ludwig, who is fantastic, is joining us from Knoxville today. She's our Smart Yards Program Director, and she will be monitoring your chat today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we really appreciate you spending your time with us today. So let's just jump right in. Okay. As we jump in here, let's talk about what are we doing today? Well, our goal today is to lead all of you wonderful, amazing gardeners towards getting certified. We want you to certify your yard through this free, that's right, free Smart Yards program. Now, this is going to give you bragging rights for many, many seasons, the opportunity to be a trendsetter, and what everyone likes, a good influence on other people. So let's get started. Also, by the way, it's great gardening information, of course. Okay, so moving along here. Hopefully, here we go. Here is what's going on. This is Davidson County. We'll get to the state later. Sorry, we can't get outside of the state, but we're going to talk about Tennessee here and a little bit about Nashville. So this is a map of Davidson County. And you see all those little squiggly red lines on it? Ah, that's what we're talking about here. Because these little squiggly red lines are some of our poor little creeks and streams that unfortunately are polluted in some way. Now, Tennessee Smart Yards is all about reducing the amount of polluted water that reaches our neighborhood creeks and streams. And you know, in Nashville, since most of our county is residential, this pollution is mainly coming off of our streets and parking lots, but also in a way that I personally find embarrassing off of our driveways and yards when it rains or snows. I had the opportunity last week, as did many of you, to notice that the snow got dingier and dingier and dingier as uh, it was coming off of the roads in our parking lots. And that's a lot of that runoff pollution. Okay, so how does this work? Well, gravity. Um, so you don't have to completely understand gravity, but basically run, rain runs down across your yard across uh, the streets, parking lots, and into street drains, or it goes through ditches. And from there, it's going to go to our nearest creek and stream. Now, every one of us plays a role in keeping our waterways healthy and clean. And that's what this program is all about, learning which actions will make a real difference. So we're so happy you're all here to help with that. All right, following the water dot. Um, let's take a look at the state of Tennessee. Now, thank you very much, Andrea, for this amazing uh, look at what's going on across Tennessee. There are nearly 4,000 miles of Tennessee streams that somehow are polluted with pollutants that are coming from, you know, us, basically. Now, this pie chart, I just wanted to focus on a few of the things, but 86% of all of those pollutants that we track 86% of those pollutants come from us residents. Uh-oh. So uh, what we're going to be doing with this program is, is trying to really eliminate a lot of that. So bacteria, uh, that's not good. And a lot of times that means dog poop. Uh, sediment, so that's an interesting thing. Um, when you have a lot of extra dirt, either construction dirt or soil that's running off of your yard, and it ends up in our waterways through the storm drains, for example, then that can clog aquatic critters, little gills, and they suffocate. You don't want to be responsible for that. Nutrients, nutrients sound like they're a good thing, but they're not in the water. We'll be talking some about that. And vegetation changes, um, doing things around any kind of waterway can indeed cause problems. We'll touch on that. So again, we want to um, fix this pie chart problem. Okay, so how does this program work? How is it sort of set up to get you certified? Well, it works this way. Now, pay attention here. Okay, so we're working on Tennessee Smart Yards. And to get a smart yard, you're going to learn different the nine different principles that go into it. And each principle will have actions that you get awarded inches for. So when you reach 36 inches a yard, then you certify to be a Tennessee smart yard. Pretty cool, right? 
Very clever that they figured that one out. Okay, and here's the cool thing is there are actually 72 inches of points out there that you could get. And uh, so there's something for everybody. So you're probably already taking some of these important pollution uh, actions and we just want you to get credit for it. So this is just an introduction today. We're gonna steer you towards the website that Smart Yards has put together, which is just amazing. That has all kinds of great information to it. So don't worry about taking a lot of notes or anything. Uh, you'll get an email afterwards with all kinds of links for you and we'll be able to help you get certified. So let's dig in. Ooh, I said that, yes I did. Let's dig in. Let's look at our first principle of the nine, which is the right plant in the right place. Now, this really is about planning and assessment, knowing how you want to use your yard and thinking about the best place for everything. So you know your own needs and wants, what do you wanna do out in your yard? And plants have needs too. So, of course, your plants are going to grow better if they're in the right place. Um, I have two oak leaf hydrangeas that are just a few feet apart, but one is in a much better place because it's growing better. The other one clearly has gotten too shaded over time. Now, we will be looking at right plant, right place. You may have heard that with uh, trees, especially. You don't want them under power, uh, power lines and have a big, tall tree that gets whacked. Uh, because it's in the power lines. Okay, now, we also want you to enjoy your space. So planning really is a great way to think about what parts of your yard are for what. And this is probably something we've all done in our head, especially in the dead of winter, many, many times. So that's really what's going on here in, in this principle. So some of the inches that you'll get are for determining your landscape objectives, what we were just talking about, sketching and assessing what you're going to do, um, planting things according to what they need. Do they need shade or sun? Um, adding native plants plants and removing ones that are exotic and especially invasive. That's very important. And preserving trees and existing vegetation, you know, if it's if it's there and it's serving a purpose, um, but you're building something new, maybe you don't need to tear it down. Okay, so that's the introduction to that one. Let's move on to managing soils and mulches. So we're going to work from the soil up because that's the basis of everything you do in your yard. Uh, we want you to get to know your soil. So in many cases in Tennessee, it's our lovely clay soil that we have to learn how to work with. But we want you to also protect your soil so the plants grow well. Treat it right and it'll treat you right. So this means basically don't compact or squish the air and water out of the soil. You know, right now if your yard's like mine, it's pretty squishy out there. So don't go walking on your garden beds because you're going to squish the soil down. It's going to be very hard later for roots to penetrate when you've made that, you know, sort of clay hard stuff in there. Um, so this uh, in this area, you're going to be talking about mulch as well. Now mulch is a tool. It protects the soil from raindrops. Now this is interesting, rain can fall so hard that it can compact, it can squish your soil. And also then it can cause erosion if you're not taking care of where the water's going. And we don't want to erode all your soil off and head it out to the streams, right? And mulch then also becomes part of the soil. So it's all part of that big cycle, right? So some of the it, uh, inches here you're going to get credit for is doing something about soil compaction, which in my case actually is as simple as having raised beds that I grow in and stain out of them. Um, mulching properly, uh, that means don't pile all your mulch up halfway up the side of a tree, it'll kill the tree. And preventing erosion, keep your soil on your property, it's yours. Okay, we're moving on here to one of really fun ones, which is thinking about ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle materials in the landscape. So some of that we just talked about um, in terms of mulching, really. If you're using leaves that uh, you gathered um, from various streets, um, if you were one of those people like me, doing that very weird slow driving down streets, looking up alleys, and then zipping up there to grab bags of leaves, ah, you are on it. 
for this particular principle. Um, we're talking about composting here, using your leaves as mulch uh, and using uh, scraps from inside your house for composting. So there'll be more information about that. And then we're also talking about just using that natural stuff that you have, say trimmings. Um, I visited someone yesterday who, by the way, she had just gotten her Smart Yard certified and I personally took her out a bag of um, this special fertilizer I'll tell you about later, but I took her reward out to her, um, one of her several rewards actually, and she was showing me her yard and one thing she had done was branches she had cut back, she was using to make borders and small fences for lightweight things that needed to climb. So she was way on that reusing stuff in her yard. There's also the salvage material, um, using cardboard as weed barriers or newspaper, that type of thing, or even just finding fun stuff at the thrift store that you turn into trellises or something that amuses you. So some of our inches, well, it even includes doing the simplest thing in the world, which is when you mow, don't pick up the grass. Maybe you have a mulching mower. I think most people do now, just leaving it there. You get credit for that. How easy is this? Composting, even if it's just throwing everything in a pile and keeping all your natural stuff, all your natural, what people might think of as waste on your site. Zooming along here. Ah, this is near and dear to my heart watering efficiently because I'm at the water department. Now, this is a very interesting thought here. A truly efficient way to use water in a yard is to design the yard, get this, so that it thrives predominantly on rainfall. It's gonna save you money and you're gonna feel like a genius if everybody else in your neighborhood's out there watering and you don't need to. So this goes back in some ways to that right plant, right place principle. They really link together nicely because if all your plants need watering and need the same type of climate or, or together, then it's more efficient for you to water them, right? And it's more efficient for you to mulch them. So you don't need to water them as much maybe. Um, also, it's an area where maybe you're gonna go ahead and really amend that soil nicely. So it gets more spongy and spongy holds the water for those plants. Now, if you don't like watering, and there are times when in the summer where I'm like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to water anything else. And I look around and realize, oh, there's that whole area of my yard that's full of these great natives that uh, they're well established and they don't need watering in the summer because they're all adjusted to our climate. So that's another part of watering efficiently is strangely, sometimes you're not watering. So, well, what if you have just a lawn and you're not really doing any extra watering because, you know, it's just, it's just lawn, it's no big deal. Well, know what? You're achieving something and you're gonna get credit for that. Now we have some interesting inches for this one um, and they come down to the simple, keep your grass a little bit higher um, so that you're not scalping it. You know, it's interesting that blade you have on top, if you've got about three inches of grass blade coming up, then you're gonna have nice roots below. But if you scalp it, it's not gonna hardly have any roots and you're gonna be watering all the time wondering why is your grass not healthy? So that's a simple one, right? It's basically doing nothing and you get credit. Cool, pat yourself on the back. Okay, watering wisely. There are various tips that uh, you'll get in our videos in the workbook and using rain barrels. So that's very cool. Now, Metro Water has a rain barrel sale every other year. This is not one of the years. I'm really sorry, but on Craigslist and in different Facebook marketplaces and things, I've seen people that have um, empty barrels for sale that you can purchase and then retrofit. Um, so just make sure they're food grade. Anyway, so rain barrels, rain gauges, um, knowing how much rain you're getting, all of that you're getting inches for. Okay, here's a biggie using fertilizer appropriately. Here's why this is so important, because rainfall can carry fertilizer from your yard to nearby waterways. Remember, it's that gravity thing. And then fertilizer actually um, makes water plants grow. So here's the real problem. Your fertilizer runs off because you put on too much. It ends up in the waterways and then the algae can grow really nicely. It loves the fertilizer. 
And then as it decomposes, there are these bacteria that need to chomp on the algae and, and break it up as it decomposes. And those decomposers need water from, uh, need oxygen that's coming out of the water. So they're using the oxygen and the water up and the little fish and other critters that need the oxygen aren't able to get it. So all of that from the simple thing of, eh, little fertilizer is fine, I'll use a lot more and dumping it all on there, can end up with something as bad as a fish kill in your neighborhood. Ugh. So, but there's even more problems here because too much fertilizer actually weakens your plants and it makes them more vulnerable to insects and diseases. And overusing fertilizer, of course, is a waste of money. So what's the big takeaway here? Read the directions, adults. Everybody read the directions. Oh, and follow them. Step two, follow them. And remember, we talked about the managing soil and mulches earlier. So here's another part where things dovetail very nicely. Um, well, one of the big recommendations is that you get and you follow the recommendations from a soil test. So get a soil test through your local extension agent and follow the results that they give you. They'll tell you some of the things you need and don't need. So, okay, what are some of the inches here? Well, we want you to use the recommended amounts of stuff. We've mentioned that several times. And um, thinking about your soil pH, there's some stuff that goes into depth there. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite things, which is how do we manage our yard pests? Well, first of all, I just want you to think here, do you find insect holes in your plants? Do you find sometimes that leaves have disappeared and it's little chompy marks? Well, congratulations, because you've created a successful habitat. You have an insect buffet, which turns into a bird buffet and for other wildlife. And so you're adding to the wildlife food web and that is cool. You know, it's unrealistic and it's even unwise to strive for an insect disease and weed free yard and garden. That's not reality and it's not helping out the world in a sense. So insects, think about it this way, are food for something and some of them are even beneficial. And uh, so some of the measures here, pay attention to your plants. That's one of the inches is if you just go out and look at your plants periodically to see what's going on, that's a great way to manage any problems you're having. Hand removal, Okay, I read this whole thing on, uh, there's a whole Facebook group about um, the hornworms, the tomato hornworms, and people who actually raise them to feed their lizards. And so they rescue them off of one set of tomato plants, take them to another set of sacrificial tomato plants, and we'll grow them out there, and then feed them to the lizards. Or other people will do that same sort of sacrificial tomato plants idea, and they want the butterflies that come afterwards. So, you know, sometimes you give a little and you get a lot out of that. You, you get to see the beauty of the butterflies. Um, you think about beneficial insects. Um, I learned from Master Gardeners to grow barley around my uh, tomatoes, and it makes tiny little flowers that little bitty insects like that actually will fight off some of the other insects. So I've got uh, encouragement of insect war in my garden. So uh, insects are, are, you know, they can be brutal with each other. So I like that. So those are some of those inches. Um, and as well as using environmentally friendly pesticides, by that I mean whatever you're using, follow directions. Don't just mix something up because you read about it and it sounds like people have used it for 275 and a half years. Um, Make sure that you know what you're using and still don't overdo it and only use stuff if you need it because it will end up in our waterways. Okay, so what else do we need to do? Ah, this of course is really the point of the whole program, I guess, is reducing the stormwater runoff and its pollutants. Stormwater, ah, it's just rain that's running off, okay? So what are these pollutants that we don't want running off? Well, in uh, in our neighborhoods, it's all the simple things really. Um, dog poop, ah, dog owners out there, take your bags with you, scoop the poop, pick the bag up and take it to a trash can. Don't leave it on the trail because you maybe will get it later. Um, but we wanna keep that stuff out of our waterways, of course. Um, fertilizers and pesticides, again, even the organic ones, even environmentally friendly. 
if it's a pesticide, it kills something. If it kills a bug, that might be something that an aquatic critter eats. Um, and the aquatic critters can be very, very sensitive to some of those things. Remember that soil? Check on your erosion. We don't want all your soil suffocating everything in the creeks either. Now, any rain that's not absorbed into your lawn and garden is going to run off your property and you're losing a very important resource. You're losing water. So it's, you know, it could pollute waterways, but why are you losing free water to begin with? So you can set a reasonable goal, believe me, it is reasonable, to keep most of your precious water resources on your property. And to do it, you want to create and keep areas really spongy so they'll absorb that rainwater. So some of the inches are, you know, making sure you have spongy areas and running your rainwater off of, say, your, uh, your roof or gutters into garden areas. Uh, having rain gardens, there's a section on rain gardens, which are very cool. Um, and doing things like scooping the poop and keeping other soil and fertilizers and stuff out of the waterways and from running off. Um, if you're hearing a lot of excitement behind me, it is because right next to me, somebody is just about to finish up her very long tenure working at Metro Water Services, is retiring at the end of the week, and I think they're having a little party. Okay, anyway, let's move on and provide for wildlife. Oh, they're having a wild party next door. That's a perfect segue to the wildlife section. So Tennessee is one of the most most biologically diverse states in the country. And besides putting out sort of, you know, your food, your water, your birdhouse, that type of thing, you can attract more watchable Tennessee wildlife or anywhere for you people, ever other places. And all you have to do is make sure they have their food. So here's how I want to break that down for you is native bugs eat native plants and native birds eat native bugs. So if you have a plant that's not native to your area, it may be beautiful, it may be wonderful, you may love it with all your heart, but if that's all you have in your area, in your yard and in your garden, you're not providing any food for the things that already want to live there. So we want you to really think about natives. Um, and think about how it all works together. I have a little food web going on at my house. I have these wonderful cana plants and this leaf roller bug gets in them and rolls up the leaves and eats holes in it. And I don't like that. So last summer I was doing the thing where I would unroll the leaves, which is all kinds of fun and satisfying and shake out the little worms. And I unrolled about the third one and a little tree frog popped out. And he was mad. I think he said bad words. So I sort of, you know, folded leaf back over him. And then I continued what I was doing and a few leaves later, boom, I found another frog. And I thought, ooh, I need to stop and think about this before the frogs like hunt me down. And so I got thinking about what was going on and I went inside and did a little reading. And what I found out was the little caterpillar that I was pulling out uh, that the frogs clearly were eating as well. The caterpillar turns into the Brazilian skipper butterfly and the cana is their host plant. So I can't fault them for living there, right? I built it and they came. Um, so I have a new respect for that particular web of life and I'm looking forward to living with it and everybody in it thriving this summer. Um, so some of our inches here are having plants that are habitats, having uh, water sources, you know, I put a bird bath out and keep it clean, um, native plants, good food for the animals. Finally, we move to our last of our nine principles, which is protecting water's edge. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, I don't live near water. Well, in Nashville, you're probably closer than you think. But I want you to think about how close everybody is to water. So think about it this way. When it rains or snows and the snow melts, it runs off your roof, right? down your downspouts, off your property, we've talked about this before, heads down to a ditch or storm drain ends up in a creek, stream, river, lake, some sort of water, right? Or even filtrates, uh, infiltrates down into the ground and becomes part of the groundwater. So in a way, you could absolutely make the argument, and uh, the wonderful Andrea Lovewig, uh, who's with us today, uh, has made this point to me before as well, that you can make the point that the water 
coming off of your house is the beginning of a river somewhere. Isn't that exciting? And so really you are at water's edge every time it rains. So that's why we want you to think about all of these, uh, these different techniques we're talking about, all these different methods of, of keeping that water clean. Now, coming back to protecting water's edge itself, if you are directly on water's edge somewhere, then you are our first line of protection. And we want you to understand some of the things the edge of the waterway needs. Also, if you're driving through your neighborhood, you'll probably see creek streams and um, now you have a way to sort of think about the landscaping around them. First of all, we want plants growing up to the edge of the bank of a creek or stream. We really do. We don't like it when people mow all the way because what that does is you've cut down the natural filter for that waterway. And all those plants will catch excess sediment that's rolling down, trash, uh, they'll even slow down and be able to absorb some of the pollutants before it gets to the water. So if you live near a creek or stream, please don't mow all the way up to it. Leave what we call a buffer, just an area, several feet wide at least, where you allow the native plants, preferably, to grow up. You know what they will also do? They'll help that stream and they'll help the wildlife in the stream because they'll provide some shade and there are things that live in the streams that want it to be a little cooler than others. So they need some of that shade. So if, uh, if you are near a creek or stream, take a close look at it. Uh, as you drive by one, take a look and sort of, you know, in your own mind, maybe give it a score. Does it look like it's, uh, it's really natural with plants around it? Or does it look like um, it could use some, some love and care? Maybe it has some erosion. Maybe it needs some more plants for wildlife habitat as well. So we have gone through all nine principles. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. How do you actually get a smart yard? You're probably thinking your yard's pretty smart already. And it probably is in the way we're already talking about. And we want you to learn even more. So the UT Extension folks have created this amazing website that's gonna guide you through the certification process. And all this stuff is free. This really knocks me out every time I say that. It's all free. So there are um, nine videos on here. And this is really cool because it's extension agents from all over the state of Tennessee talking about each principle in depth. Now, most of these extension agents are uh, native to Tennessee. And you will hear some really wonderful, authentic Tennessee accents and you'll get some incredible research-based gardening knowledge. Even if uh, you're not directly in Tennessee, so for those of you that are visiting us today from other states, welcome, and other countries, um, there is great information in here uh, that you can generalize to your area. So these nine videos will go in depth with each of the principles we talked about and will lead you along the way to what are some of the things that you can do. And then there's a workbook that you can download or you can read online. And that will also work you through each of those nine principles and point out for you what exactly it is you need to do or maybe you're already doing to start counting your inches. Okay, now there's this other amazing thing that, uh, that the, the great and wonderful Andrea Ludwig has made happen for us, which is there is a downloadable Excel spreadsheet for those of you that really like to do spreadsheets and stuff. So you can download this spreadsheet and it will add up your inches for you. Now, for those of us that, uh, that maybe just want to maybe print something off or maybe just stare at it on our phone or something, um, there also is a PDF version on the website as well, but this will add up all your points. Remember, 36 points um, for your basic certification. Uh, keep going, the more the merrier, the better you're doing. Okay, so what is this getting us? This is getting us solutions to our problems. Remember that scary chart at the beginning? Well, 
this just sort of gives you a little bit of an overview that, that we are touching on. This is just some of our principles too here. Um, we really are touching upon doing actions at our homes that can really directly address these problems. Remember, especially in Davidson County, it's residents that are causing these problems and it's us residents that have got to solve the problems and keep those creeks clean. So what's gonna happen if you get certified? Well, know what, in Davidson County, we have some really cool carrots for you. Um, stay online though, everybody else, because um, we're gonna have a, a little quiz with prizes as well. But Davidson County, here's what we got for you. Once you get certified, um, so I'm going to start with Root Nashville. Root Nashville, which is our city's uh, initiative to plant 500,000 new trees by the year 2050, and it's going fantastic. And they will give you a tree in time for the next planting cycle. They do a spring cycle and a fall cycle. So they will give you a tree. It will be a native tree. How cool is that? And you'll get to choose. Also, once you get certified, we at Metro Water Services have this slow release um, natural fertilizer and we'll give you a 25 pound bag of it. Now, this is stuff that is made from microbes that once worked for us at Metro Water Services cleaning water. They're totally natural. They, they come from soil and water to begin with. And they've cleaned the water and they're full of nutrients. And so um, we digest them. They make a lot of gas, methane gas. We heat them to over 1400 degrees to pasteurize them. And you get this uh, real slow release fertilizer that helps to build your soil, which is so important. Okay, so that's some of our carrots that you can get. Now, well, wow. we have talked a lot about this. And so now what I want to do is a little quiz for everybody. So here's what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to either open another browser or pull out your smartphone, okay? And then I am going to need to be smart enough here to um, prepare my other presentation. So let me get that going here. Okay, so I'm going to stop what I was sharing. And now let me get up here and I'm going to share again. Oh my gosh, I think I'm going to make it happen, Andrea. Okay, and yeah. share. There we go. Are you seeing the question one of five? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So here's what we're going to do, everybody. Here's what I need you to do is go to minty, M -E -T -I dot com and put in that code. And oh, we have a rose and we have, we have a critter and a unicorn. Oh my gosh. Go ahead, start logging in. I know somebody that used um, the eight ball reminds me. I know somebody that, uh, well, saw somebody that was using bowling balls as garden edging. It was fascinating. I don't know where they got so many. It was great. Ah, snowflakes. We hope that is over in just a memory now. All right, keep joining in here. Oh, we have the scary native lion. Yes, absolutely. We have some people thinking. Uh, the gator. Hmm, wonder where the gator's from, Andrea. Huh. Uh oh. I know, <laughs> I know. We got us a gator. I see your frog, though. Oh, I yay, frog. frog we got a frog. Oh, and we have Clippy. Who remembers Clippy? Oh, who would tell you what to do on your computer? I think you're starting to play a game, says Clippy. Okay, do we have some other people joining? We've got about 20 people in here, right? Oh, that's scary. Excellent, excellent join there. Okay, oh, we've got a big rose and a small rose. We're going to have the War of the Roses. Oh, what is that, a snapper, a whale snapper? A whale fish? I don't know what that is. That's good. Yeah. Ha! Welcome. Bring your flags in. All right. I like the choo-choo train. Are you from Chattanooga? Let's choo-choo mm. it. Oh, we've got, oh, another snowflake. I had a great time sledding once, twice. Yeah, that was enough. Okay, hearts. Okay, anybody else? 
Okay, so here is the way this is going to work in a moment. I am going to hit enter and the fun and frivolity will begin. And what's going to happen is you will have a question and a multiple choice of answers that will appear on your phone. You will get points for right answers and speed. So let's get going and here we go. We are going to be answering quickly. Look at your phone. Tennessee Smart Yards will help protect waterways. Is this true, false, or did you fall asleep and you just don't know? Go ahead, weigh in with your answer. Ah, everybody is smart. Of course you are. Okay, next question. Remember, fast, fast, fast. And how many Smart Yard principles are there? Let's scan. It's a counting thing. Ooh, I have a lot of choices for you. 15, 7, 9, or 1. Ah, we're weighing in quickly. I see people thinking about it and weighing on in. The time is running out. Three, two, one, and time's up. Nine. Yes. 15. I don't know. I like the idea of 15 in a way. That's more. Seven is less. Hmm. Okay. Let's move on. And, ooh, we're going to see who's ahead. Okay, leaderboard. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Who do we have? Alio, Ashby and Sarah, followed quickly by Dr. Centipede. Cool. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's happening here. Come on, Dr. Centipede. I just like the name. Okay, runoff pollution from yards can come from, look at your phone, and you have choices to make. Oh my gosh, I hope I'm not stressing anybody out. You have so many choices to make here. And we're counting down, two, three, two, one, and everyone's voted, and all of these, you're so right. Dog poop is indeed my particular least favorite of all of these, so. Okay. Whew. What's going on? Oh, we have another leaderboard. Who is still jumping out there? Ooh, Allie, Ashby, and Sarah. Oh, oh, Dr. Centipede and Detrick. Dietrich, uh, you've moved way up. Oh, tied with Ashby, okay. And I believe this is going to be our final question. Not quite our final question. How many inches do you need to document to get certified as a Tennessee Smart Yard? How many inches? Think about it, think about it. Oh my gosh, I can just tell people are quivering from the competition and the excitement. Three, two, one, and time's up. 36 inches is a yard, yes. Oh, but the one person that said 72, uh, we need to figure out who that is, Andrea, and I think we want them to achieve all 72. Uh, the people that said 12, yeah, you're gonna have to do more than that. Okay, and oh, 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 let's see, zipping up and about, counting and deciding, we have Allie, Dietrich, and Sarah. Ooh, this is exciting, okay. And now we, I believe this is the last one. How much does it cost? How much hard-earned money are you going to spend to become a Tennessee Smart Yard? How much are you going to have to give the extension service to be a smart yard? Three, two, one, time's up. Zero, and everybody is 100% correct. This is absolutely free and wonderful. So thank you all so much for playing our game there. This was so much fun. Okay, and, oh wait, I didn't do the winners. Oh my gosh, and you're all just, who won, who won? Oh, can't believe I did that. Let's see, let's see what has happened here. At the very end, the great excitement is Alio, followed by Dietrich, followed by Sarah. Well, if the three of you wonderful players will please stick something in the chat to either Andrea, Laureen, Ludwig, or myself, Julie Berbilia, um, let us know your email so that we can make sure and get back with you so as to deliver your prize. So thank you everyone. And actually I had quit sharing and let's see, did you see the, the winning screen? Maybe not. Look, there it is. 
Oh, yay. Okay. Now we're back. I just got overexcited here. Okay. So, wow. I have taken you right up to 1246. And I know we said 1245, but clearly I can't hardly stand it. I do have one last little bitty poll here. Um, let me, oops, let me find the right poll. Hang on, hang on, everybody, stand by. Oh my gosh, stop sharing those results. Relaunch polling, carry on. Ah, oh, that was the old poll. I can't find the new poll because I got too excited. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask you all to do this. If you are ready to get certified, go ahead and put a yes, a woohoo, an oh yeah, a big smile, stick something in the chat for us. We, again, we want you to get certified. This uh, really is serious stuff actually about keeping our rivers and streams clean. But the gardening part of course is, is dear to all of our hearts. And um, it's just so delightful to know that something you love doing is making such a big difference. So um, I will take just a moment here and see, uh, Andrea, are there questions Burning questions we need to answer at this point. No burning questions, but we've got a lot of enthusiastic people. Oh, I see a woohoo! <laughs> this, this is great. This is great. We love you all so much. Um, really and truly, this is so much fun. Uh, Andrea coming to us all the way from Knoxville there. Actually in her office, I'm in my office. It's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we really look forward to hearing from you. You will get an email from me in about an uh, hour and a half or something that's gonna have all, all kinds of links um, to how to get to all the materials we talked about today along with some other materials. Um, also, there will be a link to um, the, to register for another workshop, please share that with your friends um, and everyone else you know and other gardeners and I don't know, walk around and uh, hand it out to people, whatever you wanna do. Um, it's, it's up to all of us to keep our rivers clean. So um, thank you uh, UT Extension for giving us this fantastic program to work with. Thank you for all of you for what you do already and are doing. And um, thank you for all of you that came from so many different places. This is great. Let, let me take this opportunity to say thank you, Julie, for imparting all of this wisdom to the group today. I learn something new every time I listen to you. So thank you for the energy and the enthusiasm. Oh, it is, it is my pleasure, absolutely. I can't think of any better topic on such a beautiful day. Okay, everybody, it's been great hanging out with everyone, but I guess we all have to move on and start certifying our yards so that we can get our certification sign. All right, oh, I see a for sure we'll be doing this. Oh yes, oh yes, please do. Okay, everybody, have a great day. We'll, uh, someday in the future, we'll all have a big garden party somewhere. But until then, get out there. Happy smart gardening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>